itty bitty to litty, and itty bitty to litty, a itty bitty to litty. What's up, everybody? My name is Andrea, part of the Dynamic Duo. If you're new, and if you are, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And if you're already part of the Glam Gang, welcome back to another video. So today's video will be a little bit different from anything I've ever done before. I recently went to IKEA, like inside an actual store for the first time, and I was traumatized. Not because it was like messy or anything like that, just because I've heard that it was like a trap in there, like. When you go in, you have to go through everything to get out. But I didn't believe it because I'm like, that's kind of a health hazard. Like, what if there's like an emergency and I didn't leave? I can't just walk out the door. But literally, like, <laughs> they make it so you have to see pretty much everything in there. At least on the display room floor that I went to. Um, but it was a really good experience. I got a lot of inspo from there, surprisingly. Um, their decor was really, really good. So I kind of wanted to piggyback off that. There with piggyback. you now, Portia. Piggyback. You no, piggyback. That's what you do. Because a lot of us are, how do I say this? A lot of us aren't settled in like our location. A lot of us are trying to figure out where we want to live or do, you, do these have good schools for my future children? Am I going to settle here? Do I like my job enough to stay here forever? And that's usually not the case. So a lot of places that we live aren't going to be permanent. A lot of places are temporary. Some places are seasonal. Some places, hey, I had to move here because I needed a job real quick. I needed some money, but I'm gonna, I'm trying to get to LA or I'm trying to get to Atlanta or I'm trying to get to New York. So we're not going to settle and spend a whole bunch of money on purchasing a home. And normally apartments are not the hugest. They're not our dream apartments, at least not for me. Um, I lived in a home before here, but I moved for a, another job opportunity. I love that house high ceilings great storage but this apartment was <laughs> not so I had to kind of make it like a home you know what I'm saying like just because you're renting somewhere or it's not your dream home doesn't mean that the decor can't be part of your dream your home is where you're supposed to have peace this is where you're supposed to enjoy your time where you're supposed to get away from the world you pay to live somewhere so why not elevate it why not make it nice like somebody asked me before girl you live in an apartment you decorate it like a house because it's my house right now like so in ikea i was really inspired because they actually had these like mock apartments like some of them were like 450 square feet but the way they had it set up was like to die for like it worked that looked like there was enough storage, not for me because I'm kind of a hoarder, <laughs> but it, it worked. And I just kind of wanted to do a video on just some special tips that I have used in my apartment to make it feel like a home, even though it's not my dream home, it's not really, really spacious. My ceilings aren't really high, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't check off everything that I need or I feel is a necessity in my home. If you've been inside of an Ikea before, or you don't really care what it looks like, I'll put up a timestamp like always somewhere so you can fast forward. After we walk through the footage that I have of Ikea, I'm gonna share with you my top tips of how I changed my small apartment from boxy and choppy, from itty bitty to litty, if you will. Y'all like that? Itty bitty to litty, and itty bitty to litty, a itty bitty to litty. Itty bitty to litty. Okay, that's enough. I'm gonna be in the corner commentating as normal, so let's hop right into the footage. So right away, the IKEA store I went to, I don't know if they're all the same or not, but they bring you up this escalator and it kind of preps you for what you're about to see. As soon as we reached the top, I saw the showroom. Showroom was bomb. Um, first thing I saw was this room right here and what popped out were these pendant lights that they had at the top. And these are like $40, like so affordable, so nice looking. Um, I love how they had multiples. Bed wasn't made, but we'll look past that. They had sectionals in here and I didn't realize it was like this much of a home store. They had this cloud couch dupe and I was just like blown away. It was dark gray, perfect for like a kid's room, a dorm, um, shoot, anywhere, honestly. I mean, I wouldn't put in my living room or anywhere, but like that can work in multiple spaces. And then I saw these setups that actually look like a home. So I have like a dining room and a living room and it just looks so nice to me. 
everything was so affordable but still looked high end and i like i said i've never been in here before so it was a surprise also i did not know that ikea sold appliances so <laughs> that was a shock but this kitchen setup was bomb as well um the storage in there was nice so you see here they have like a little pantry um even the backsplash like the tile the details that they put i don't know if they sell that at ikea or not but the details that they put into it was just bomb and then they, they had this pendant light again here so the pendant light was clearly very versatile like dining room living room bedroom anywhere and like i said it was like 40 bucks like you can't beat that and then I saw this this kitchen was spectacular it did not look like it would be in Ikea it, I, honestly it looked like a model home or you know when you're building a home and they bring it to showrooms that look like what it should be in so nice so I just had to share that with you guys pendant lights everything was just mm, chef's kiss so this is one of the rooms I saw um, that was like, oh my gosh, this is like genius. Because the space was not big at all, but the way they utilized every square inch was just, look at the couch. The couch looks like high end, like like I said, it's like a dupe for the RH um, cloud couch. This one, this one was bigger than the one you saw in the beginning. So this one could kind of fit into, you know, a living room if you wanted to put it there. And I love the lights above the couch as well. Here's the infamous um, light a lot of people put up under their sofas so they save some square footage on the floor. And then they had this small um, kitchen right here. But it worked. Like the table and the chairs didn't take away from the rest of the kitchen so you could still get around but still have a place to eat. And then they had this outdoor area space that just looked so nice to me. I love the lights that they had hanging from the ceiling. You can put everything in this display out on the little balcony, but you can get like a few seats. You can hang some lights. You can totally mirror this display. And then I saw these picture lights, which look so good. Y'all know I love picture lights. The only thing about these were they had to be hardwired into the wall, so. That was the only thing about those, but they look so good. And this little space just looks so nice to me as well. I love the little lounge chair they had, the bookshelf, the light. Again, not a huge space, but the way they have it set up just looks so luxurious to me. Okay, this room right here, this whole display was like an apartment. I think it was supposed to be 450 square feet. But look, y'all look how nice. That was the kitchen we just saw. This will be like the living room. And it still looks like there's plenty of space. They have a TV here, plenty of storage on the bottom and the top. And then there's a bedroom here. It didn't have like a traditional closet. So it had like wardrobe um, furniture pieces in there. And then they had the bathroom on the side. And I was just thinking, I can totally live there. I can't because I have too much stuff. But if I had to, that would definitely work. The way they utilize the space, the way they put everything, it just looked like everything was supposed to be there. Nothing was out of place. Everything had a place. So now I'm going to share with you guys my top tips on how to change your rental space to more of a homey feel. So tip number one is make sure your home is clean and smells good. I don't know about y'all, but if something stinks, I feel like I need to get away from it. And if you're in a space where it just stinks <laughs> and there's nowhere to go, like it just smells, it makes it feel cramped, like you can't get away from it. Sometimes you can't help it. Like in my apartment, sometimes my neighbors or the people above me will cook something and it'll kind of seep through and come into here. And I'll be like, oh, okay, I guess they're cooking fish tonight. So the, the apartment was like fried fish all day. But that's neither here nor there. That's something you can't control. Um, I recently got this Vitruvi diffuser. I got it in black. This is, was expensive. It's like stoneware. It's really, really nice. Um, but it was so worth it, y'all. It literally fits into my decor so well. You don't have to get this one, but there's diffusers everywhere. You can go to Home Goods and find one for like 15 bucks. So this is tried and true. I love that diffuser. It literally smells so it makes your home smell so good. 
I want to get another one for my bedroom. Along with that diffuser, I got this essential oil. Normally, I'll stick with eucalyptus mint. If you've been here for a while and been following us, you know that is my go-to scent. I love eucalyptus mint. It's so refreshing. It opens you up. It's just It just smells so clean. So I usually just stick with that. But I want it to be different and a little bougie with my new bougie diffuser. So I got the Santal essential oil from Aromatech. It was kind of expensive. The small one was 10 milliliters and it was like $23 on sale during Black Friday. And then they had this one, which was 120 milliliters for, I think it was like 52 or $53. And I was like, it doesn't make sense about a small one. This one's 12 times the size. So I just got the big one for $52. Don't regret it at all. I don't regret it. It smells great. I've seen people say, oh, it makes your house smell like a luxurious hotel. And most times it's cap. Cap. <laughs> like a lot of stuff that's expensive sometimes it's just expensive for no reason or because of the name but this really is worth it i diffused for seven hours on saturday and you know it turned off after seven hours and i left the next day and came back and the house still smelled like this so if you don't like diffusers or don't want to worry about something being plugged in or anything like that Room sprays are really inexpensive too. This one is really good. It's Cozy Fireside. I found this at TJ Maxx. It smells so good. It's made with essential oils as well. And I just literally spray this all day. It smells so, so good. It's from a couch. I spray everything. And it just makes, oh, it smells so good. It just makes how it smells so nice and so fresh. And that also makes it feel bigger, I feel, because it just makes it feel airy, like you can breathe. So tip number two would be to go for bright colors whenever you can. For me, it'll be wall paint and drapery. I, for a long time, had gray velvet curtains in my um, living room, and I love them. They work my decor great but I recently changed it to white. And when I tell you guys the difference it has made, I love being in here. It feels so much bigger. It feels airy, it feels fresher, like breathe. And I probably will never change back to my gray curtains in here because the vibe in here is just bomb. Um, also wall paint, love a gray, love a gray color, but I like to stick with like brighter ones because I feel like darker ones make you feel kind of like compact it works in some spaces but like in the space i'm in now a dark color would just not be it i'm going to be looking at my phone just to reference some pictures so i can look along with you guys so don't mind that so in this space here they went with really really dark colors but it works in this space the ceilings are really really high it doesn't look like they're you know cramped for space or anything but it works in this space. You have to know what works for your space. Some things look good in some spaces, but it's not gonna look the same in yours because you don't have the same elements. I don't have high ceilings in here, right? So if I did all black walls, it would feel just really cramped. It already feels boxy and choppy. So this bright, like grayish color that I have in here works perfectly. But if you like that, do what you wanna do. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm not trying to read you. I'm just trying to help you. And y'all are here for some tips. Y'all are watching for some type of reason. So I'm just sharing my tips with you guys. Now, if you do like a dark wall or a dark color, I would suggest maybe doing like an accent wall and not doing the whole, like the whole living room black. Maybe just do like black. If you have a fireplace, I love the way a black wall looks on a fireplace or a black marble or something. That's an easy way to get your dark color in there, but not overwhelm your space with darkness. So tip number three, use mirrors. This sounds very like duh, like everybody knows that, but a lot of people don't. Mirrors really give you the illusion that there's more space than it is. I know a lot of times, like I just bought a huge mirror and every time I walk past it, it looks like there's like another room, right? So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So in this room, they went with a mirrored wall. Um, it's paneled, but it still looks really nice. You see what I'm saying, how it looks like there's another room, but it's really just mirroring what's in front of it. It just makes the space look so much bigger. In this one, they went with a mirror above the fireplace, and it just reflects light. It bounces light off of it. It just makes it feel like it's bigger than what it is. I myself, I love a floor mirror. I have so many in here that I will show you later on in, in future videos, but I love a floor mirror just because 
it's, it's just tall, it's just big, you can see yourself. Everything just looks so much better with the mirror. They make your ceilings seem longer or taller than what they are, and they just reflect light, and I just love them. Even if you don't like floor mirrors, you can always go with a wall mirror, put them in your entryway, put them above your console table, above your couch, literally works everywhere, I'm telling you. Okay, next tip will be to go with wall lighting or sconces. So for me, I feel like table lamps and floor lamps, I love them, they're dope. I have some, some of them here, but they take away space. Table lamps, you have to have something for them to sit on, so you have to have some kind of furniture on the floor, which takes away from the square footage. Floor lamps, I mean, they have to stay on the floor, so they're taking away from your floor um, or your square footage as well. So wall lighting is a really good way to still get that lighting in, to still look high end, but still keep the space on your floor free and clear. And another thing about like tabletop lighting and floor lamps is it limits your possibilities for your furniture because you need that floor space. So sconces are an easy way to remedy that. I've seen them in big homes. Um, I'll show you a picture now. Like this home is clearly huge, great space, but they use wall lighting that kind of drifts down. Um, and it doesn't take away from the floor space. You see how they have their seating all the way up against the wall and they have like a coffee table. So it doesn't take away from the space but you still get your lighting in. So obviously in this place, they wanna display their windows. They want that to be the star of the show. They just have a wall lamp or a sconce. I don't, I don't really know what the difference is, honestly. They have wall lighting um, and it just, doesn't take away from the floor space. So next I wanna talk about how boxy an apartment can be. Literally, it's like, if you look at the floor plans of an apartment, it's like box, square, 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 square. And I guess a lot of homes are like that, but it feels especially boxy in an apartment because it's like all in like one cramped space, right? So if you don't like how boxy or choppy your place is, you can always go with curved furniture. I have seen so many curved sofas. They look so nice and they really round out the space. Regardless of what the walls are like, it really rounds out the space. Now curved sofas are kind of expensive. Um, I've seen some that are, affordable, that are affordable, but the ones that I really like are kind of up there. So you can always go with a circular rug in front of your sofa. You can go with a circular coffee table. There's always a way to bring in those shapes. You can go for round pillows. This is one that I found at Home Goods. It was only $14.99 and it is total dupe for an RH, the RH round pillow. But you can go for round anything just to kind of take away from the attention that the boxiness of your apartment or your home has. So let's look at some inspo just so y'all can kind of visualize what I'm saying. So like in this space, right, is the walls are standard. Um, the ceilings are really nice, but they're still boxy and square light. If you don't like that, they went with a round sofa. Everything in this picture that's an accent is round. Their chandelier, their lighting is round. Their couch is rounded. The curves on this side chair around it, the coffee table, the area rug, everything. Do you, do you see how it plays off of each other and takes away from just the linear or lineage, is lineage a word? But it takes away from how linear everything else is and you really just focus on how round all the accent pieces are. In this picture, they use round pillows too, like the one I just showed you. And they do have a lot of square pieces as well, but they went with a round coffee table. Their sofa is rounded, their pillows are round, and their vessel they have in the middle are round. So you don't have to just look at squares all day. Your eye can be drawn to different spaces. And here's another one. Um, they went with round pillows, round coffee table, and if you look at their rug, their rug has lines, but on the side it has some round detail as well. So it's ways, y'all. There are plenty of ways to make it feel rounded so you can see all the curves and so there's always a way to not be boxy so the next tip for fixing boxiness would be to make your spaces cohesive so i love an open concept but if it's not done right it can seem kind of like room 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 right but if you make your decor cohesive they don't have to be identical twins 
They can be sisters or first cousins, but they need to kind of tie into each other. So you can do that with your color scheme. You can do that with art pieces. Like if it's like part of a series or something, you can kind of make it look like, oh, look at this art piece. Oh, this one kind of looks like the other one. Is that a set? You know what I mean? So it just kind of draw, draws your eyes this way instead of like, oh, there's a room right here. Oh, there's a room right there. Oh, there's a room right there. Like if you have your living room is like orange and gray. And then you have your dining room that's like red and green. And then your kitchen is just white. It's just kind of like, like what's going on here? But if they all kind of marry each other and kind of flow, it'll literally make people look like this. Like this was so nice. Everything is not identical, but everything just complements each other very well. So I actually found a video on Pinterest and it kind of goes, now this space is not that small beware but it does kind of show you what I'm talking about so like in this room you have your dining room all the colors are like this black white and this cognac color and everything kind of marries each other same color scheme different decor like they don't have the same tables everywhere but they have the same color scheme so it makes your eyes just kind of go like this kind of like skim the room and see everything it, y'all, it makes a difference, I promise. So this is another open concept room. Same color schemes, but the way everything is so cohesive, it just makes you kind of look like, wow. Like you're just looking around. You're not just looking at one place and the other and the other. You're kind of looking at how everything just blends in and just so nice. This is a really, really nice <laughs> um, apartment or whatever it is. But you guys see what I'm saying? It, it really makes a difference. So another video I want to show you guys, Catherine Alderone. She is so bomb, y'all. She's I swoon on Instagram, and she is like one of my favorite interior designers. Her space is, I mean, don't get me wrong, she has a nice house, but everything isn't matchy matchy. She actually does a lot of match match stuff, and it just works. So I just wanted to share her little video that she shared. Just look at all the different elements that she has. She has a lot of shapes a lot of antique stuff, a lot of just marble. She loves marble and I love marble too. That's probably why I love her so much, but everything just kind of works and it just kind of, your eyes just kind of look around just to see, you know what I mean? It just tells a story. Your room should tell a story. Okay, so now we're gonna get into elevating your space. Now, this is really tricky. Actually, it's not that tricky, but sometimes it can be because we want these grand pieces in our space and sometimes it just don't work out. But sometimes it's simply not gonna work in your space. Like, I'm sorry, it's just not. Unless they make a small size, you're just not gonna be able to get that. So for example, look at this room right here. You see the chandelier at the top, the round, really glitz glam chandelier. Gorgeous, right? I can't fit that in my 200 square foot living room. If I did, it'll literally be like this and I'm like be walking around the chandelier and it'll take up so much space. Yes, it will be beautiful, but it does not fit. So you have to be realistic with yourself. You can still be luxe and find nice pieces, but you just have to scale it to whatever your space is. So with chandeliers, if you just feel like you have to have one, but you just can't, it just doesn't work, a sconce is another good way to bring in that lighting. There are so many different styles. You can find glam sconces, you can find um, mid-century, modern, it's just any kind of sconce, I'll guarantee you, they make one. There's one that I've been dying for, it's, um, they're like baton lights, but my space just doesn't allow for that right now. I can get a sconce to get the same kind of feel, but it'd just be something that fits into my space. So with the baton light one that I love, I can't fit it here, but they sell really linear sconces that'll give give off the same effect. Easy, if you like that glitzy, glammy chandelier we just saw, then you can get a glitzy, glammy sconce. It'll be on your wall, you still get your crystal vibes, you still get your shininess, but it'll just make sense for your space. So one of my favorite um, kind of grand pieces in my home is this statue right here. Damn, you fine. I'm, I'm... It's a torso. It's pretty big. It's bigger than my head. Um, but it's not overpowering. I can still put it in my space. I have shelves um, behind my TV. It's kind of a built-in situation here in my living room, which I can't change it at all. 
but I can put this up and it still be substantial and make a statement, but not overpower my space, right? So in this picture, they went with a few pieces that were luxurious, right? Um, they have a subtle couch, really nice couch still, but it's really subtle, really minimal. But they went with a more abstract, more substantial light fixture, and it totally works for the space. It's not overpowering. Um, they went with a marble wall on the side, which I love. And it's still, there's still space. Now the space is not huge, clearly, but all of this stuff works. So pick and choose your battles. Pick and choose where you wanna kind of make something grand and where you wanna kind of scale back on something. And it truly does work. Another mistake a lot of people make um, is getting big trees that just, <laughs> It's like a jungle, right? I love an olive tree, I love a fig tree, I love I love trees, I love plants, I love greenery, but it has to make sense. If you can't fit a big tree or a big plant in your space, there are so many different alternatives. So like here in their dining room, dining room isn't super huge, right? Still nice, but not super huge. Instead of a tree out in a corner somewhere that'll take away from the decor in the space, they went with potted plants in the middle. And it still looks good, you still get your greenery, you still get, you know, a little bit of outdoors coming in, but it makes sense for the space. In my living room, I could fit a tree, but the way I have my furniture set up in here, it wouldn't work. It would just take away from everything. So I have this cement bowl and I have um, this reindeer moss on the inside. So I can still get my greenery in, but it's not taken away from my space or it doesn't make sense. You see what I'm saying? So if you want that height still, kind of like a tree, but you don't have the space for it. You can get a nice base, a nice floor base, and you can put stems. And it'll give you your height, it'll give you, give you your greenery, and it'll still make sense for your space. So another way you can elevate your space will be crystals. For me, crystals are like, I can't go without. I have to have a crystal somewhere in the room in order to make it feel luxurious to me. So I actually found um, a couple, I have a couple of these actually. These GL crystals are really nice. They add a little bit of glitz, but not too much. If you're not into glam, but you still want a little bit of shininess, a little bit of, mm, just go with a crystal. Um, this one was $70 at Home Goods. So they can get kind of expensive depending on the size and what type of crystal it is. But I promise you it's so worth it. Splurge some places, save some places. So this was a little bit of a splurge. Even though $70 wasn't like bad, it was just kind of like $70, you know what I mean? And then I also found this Rose Quartz um, crystal. It's refined. These go upwards of $200. They're actually more expensive than that that I've seen online and I got it for 60 bucks at Home Goods. This one is in my room to bring the energy of love but crystals are a really easy way you just sit them there you don't have to think about it just sit them there and they just do all the talking for you so next up for elevating your space go with wall art unless you're minimal um which i really love that look i just can't my life just doesn't allow for that like kim kardashian west and kanye west's house is really minimal there's like no art no anything it's like all white looks bomb but if you want like a luxurious like hotel feel um i find that wall art really does make a difference and you can make it wall art can be really expensive especially if you want something really big kiva brand does a really good job of showing you how to diy like a huge canvas and just making it yourself michael's always has sales on canvases i got two um 48 by 60 canvases for 100 bucks 50 dollars a piece and then you just go to town and you can make it look like whatever you want it to look like you can get the colors that you need sometimes a wall art you can't find a specific color you need or your style or whatever but with making your art you truly can make it what what you want it to be and make it fit perfectly for your space so if you want framed art, they do sell framed canvases and you can't frame the canvas, but if you don't want something that big and you just want some small pieces, you can always do a gallery wall as well. You can DIY that too. I did um, a DIY wall in my last video. I'll link that below if you missed it. But I just took some poster board, um, got it from Dollar Tree, went to town on the art and put them in frames. Frames are not expensive. I got a three pack from Home Goods. Um, they were, it was a three pack for $30, so 10 bucks a piece. Ikea sells them, you can get them literally from everywhere. I, you can even get them from Dollar Tree, if you don't mind the frames that they have in there. 
but gallery walls are a really nice way to elevate your space. They're in restoration hardware. I've seen them in mansions, hotels, everywhere. Foolproof, tried and true. Can't mess that up. And my last tip, which is very, very important to me, is go with coffee table books. It is so easy to elevate your home with coffee table books. If you want designer feel, but you don't got designer money, or you just not willing to spend that much money on something designer, you can always go with a book. It's always more affordable to go with a book. Hermes blanket, a stack, easy, right? Look at this picture. Looks really good in the room, but who wants, who wants to spend that much money on a blanket? I know I don't. So I just go with books. I have this Hermes um, Writer Day book that I found for $24.99 at Home Goods, And I can still get the name in my home, but I don't have to spend that much money. Louis Vuitton, this trunk looks bomb in their house, right? But this trunk, I looked up. I think somebody was trying to sell it for like $28,000. No ma'am, no ma'am, no ham, no turkey. No, no ma'am, no ham, no turkey. We're not doing that. That's $28,000, come on now. That's a little ridiculous. So you can just go with a book. Just go with a designer book, y'all. I have this Louis Vuitton book that I've had for years and years and years. You still get the name. You can still get the name. Still get the luxury in your home. But you don't have to spend that much money. I paid $60 for this at Marshalls. Um, I think it's like $120 online. But you can still get some Louis Vuitton in your house. You don't have to pay that much to get it in there, though. And always look at the back or the the covers behind your books too because sometimes it'll go better with your decor. See, you still get the name on there, Louis Vuitton. Um, because this is stacked to put some other books, I like to keep the cover on it so you can see what it is. Easy. So that is it for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope I shared some tips with you that will help you change your space from itty bitty to litty or just make it homey and just more enjoyable for you. This is a series I'm gonna start. I will, in future videos, show different rooms in my home. My apartment is a little bit over a thousand square feet, so not really big. I mean, it's not super small, but it's not really big either. And I just wanna show you guys how I elevated it, and hopefully it'll help you guys out. Um, I'm almost done with my living room, so I think that will be my next one on how I decorate it, and I just really, really love it here. Your home is so much, this is where you pay your bills. You pay to live here, so you need to make it as pretty and as homey and as comfortable as you can because it just doesn't make sense not to. Like, why not? So just make it comfortable. Make it where you love it here. A lot of times I sleep in my living room instead of my bedroom because I'm still in the process of updating that, but this is pretty much done, done and I just, it's just, it's therapeutic for me, you guys. Just looking at how beautiful it's come along. If you have any tips or suggestions on how to elevate a space or things that you did that you want to share with me or our community here, sound off in the comments. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much again for tuning in, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, peace out.